what's going on shroomies and shroomettes hey let's get straight down to business we have some funk going on that we need to address a s a p this tub smells crazy soon as you open up the grow room it's the first thing you smell super sour super pungent so we brought it outside we got some hydrogen peroxide just to test to see what reaction whatever this is gives us to our peroxide and we have no action so we're gonna toss this tub we're doing a complete reset hop in the shower wash these clothes let's get it let's go all right we are back nice little reset okay so we're gonna do a couple of things different this go around number one we're going straight into fruit and conditions as you can see i have the micropose filter patches already placed on the lid this is my first time going straight into fruiting conditions on any grow so i'm hyped to see what those results are going to be number two i'm using freshly pasteurized substrate on the previous grow that substrate was sitting for about a week and i already had my hands in it once for a smaller grow but i figure let's not waste it but in the end we winded up wasting a bit more than just that cocoa For those wondering if me using the butter knife may have been a contributing factor to my contamination, I do not believe so. I've used this butter knife on previous grows and I believe as long as it's sanitized, it'll work. I've had success with it before. Although it's not the best, I'm working on ways to get the rice out of these jars, but this has been the best method for me so far since this is the brown rice saga let's talk about whole grain brown rice for a quick second what are my thoughts on whole grain brown rice i honestly love it it's super easy to prep it colonizes super quickly for me at least you know the popcorn it it, it didn't really work too well for me i thought it was colonizing fast until i saw brown rice that's that's a, a big plus for me the one big takeaway is if you're doing brown rice in the jar it is super difficult to break up it's like a sponge ball rice jar it is super difficult to break up like I had to bring out the butter knife. I had no other way. I was not going to break my leg or break the jar trying to shake it up. I do love how my flushes have been since switching over to the brown rice. They've been full dense canopies, even on the smaller six quart grows i've had fruits weigh in at 78 grams so so far the brown rice is doing justice for me of course we'll continue to experiment with different grains but right now this is the brown rice saga Okay, so I do want to go over this really quick because I've been getting a lot of questions in the comments about it, and that is the pseudo casing layer. Now, the pseudo casing layer is a vital key to your grow because it locks in your moisture and it keeps out the contamination. Without the pseudo casing layer, you are risking your whole grow. The pseudo casing layer is done before your cake colonizes we do this at this process here as we spawn to bulk the pseudo casing layer is done as you spawn to bulk i 
Our goal is to leave no grain exposed. Make sure we pull up on the liner. We give it a nice little spritz with our 9.5 pH water. As we do the same for our lid. And you don't have to worry about spraying the filter patches with the water. Just don't oversaturate and avoid spraying your alcohol directly on them. Wipe around. And there we go. Let's go. Seventeen days in fruiting conditions. Let's go. We have snow on the ground. The mycelium is doing its thing. So far, so good. We are in the clear. Now, remember, just because it's in fruiting conditions does not mean you want to go ahead and lift up your lid. We're going to have patience. Let more snow fall. And you'll be like a kid on Christmas in July. 26 days in fruiting conditions and I saw this little mushy out the corner of my eye and I said well I'll be damned we did it so far so good we have some more action going on along the edges of the tub so that is good I'm excited yeah Shroomies, it has been a super long journey, but we are 33 days in fruiting conditions and we have some super, super pretty fruit to show for it. And these fruit are actually pretty decent size, you know, they're not small by any means. They're actually pretty chunky. You can start to see the bluing in the gills. How they're really starting to open up. The cap has that curl wave to it. Pretty dope, pretty dope. I like these. Thirty six days in fruiting conditions. Oh, man, it feels like a lifetime. But we have a nice, pretty deep bluing on the gills. And these fruit are super soft to the touch. I wasn't expecting them to be that soft, but you can almost squeeze water right out of it. Yeah, it's about that time, baby. Harvest day, harvest day. Let's go. We are at the finish line. But before we cross it, we have a few more things we need to do, Shroomies. Look at that. Look at that. Smell is amazing. Of course, of course it is. Now we're down to the juicy part, the harvest. I want to recommend you guys get some curved shears. 
Now I use the AC Infinity Curve Shears. I'll leave a link in the description, but it's definitely a tool to have because you can get right down to the base of the mushroom and the floor of the substrate and snip right there. So that way you're not just pulling at the mushrooms. You don't want to have grains exposed. As I prepare for flush two, what I do is I'll spray the surface of the cake with a decent amount of water. I'll spray the sides of the tub and I'll also spray the lid. I'm not a big fan of dunking, so this is what I do. So I went ahead and picked the best three fruit that I can spread across the five agar dishes that I have. Three of the blue, which I've prepped and poured myself using the Micropose reusable Petri dishes. Those are a great tool for learners, especially if you don't have the proper technique just yet, which I can vouch for. I'm not the best just yet. So I still have a ways to go, but those are a perfect learning tool. And we want to make sure everything is sterilized and sanitized beforehand. As we open the Petri dish, we leave a clear space in front of it for the air to flow. You don't want to block that. And using these tweezers are a lot easier than using the scalpel. Although the tweezers do not heat up in the induction sterilizer, I'll still use my torch for that. I definitely want to give credit to Edward Grand for the tweezer idea. I was watching one of his live streams and he mentioned it and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try that because whenever I'm making clones, it is super difficult to get the mushroom material off of the scalpel and onto the agar without dragging, jabbing and cutting up the agar. I don't recommend bringing your fruit this far away from your flow hood when you're cloning but i want to show you guys exactly what i'm doing and how easy it is to so just grab that off and place it on your agar bam there we go nice and easy we're wrapping it up in our micro pose polyfilm and we label it and we are good to go. Shroomies, I appreciate y'all for rocking with your boy. If you are enjoying the content, hit the like, drop a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Oh yeah, before we go, I just wanted to throw my personal record up here we have a 131.3 let's go baby easybluethumb.com is up and running we have t-shirts hoodies slides go cop your granny a mug while you're at it i appreciate the love and support go check it out EasyBlueThumb.com. Let's go.